Welcome back YouTube. So in this video, we're going to address some of the current things that are going on in the market and whether or not we still have a crypto run on our hands. I know a lot of people are kind of panicking about these price adjustments and they were thinking that this next run was going to be it. In our last video, we talked about some of the things that were coming up, so a few of the golden crosses, some key points that we needed to hit. We're going to talk about how those things have played out thus far. Because sometimes instead of just, you know, uh, speculating and uh, going for the overall projections, because now we're in a market where things are, at least this thus far in the market, and thus far this year, things have been able to kind of retest and consolidate for quite some time. But even right, what you're looking at right now on the, the Bitcoin chart, we're con consolidating in the top level of FIB, which is what, which is, a, I believe, is a good thing. And once we start breaking down below there, then we can start to talk about, okay, this can uh, conclude the um, the run here or the bull run, and, and possibly we've already peaked. But as long as we're in this level, uh, that's one of the key indicators I'm looking for as far as the strength of the market and overall liquidity coming into the market. So. Um, and, and that perspective, we're fine. Um, I wanted to address this before we look at uh, for Doge in a moment. So one of the things that we're talking about were the golden crosses that were coming up, some of the key levels, um, the 72 and the 200, right? So we got the two, the 72 cross, which is this orange line here. We got the 72 cross and we were able to rally up until around 66,000, right? The, the key indicator here and one that was be the most powerful indicator here that we're using would obviously be the 200 day, right? First, we would have the 14 cross the 200. And then obviously the blow off top will be somewhere between like the 72 crossing the 200. And that's when things are just going crazy um, and, and, and to the upside here. What we're looking at, if you look close, I'm going to try and zoom in here. You'll see that we had the, this is something similar that happened back when I was talking about the initial run for Doge. And we had that golden cross uh, coming up to around the 200 day. And they pretty much the patterns, they merged, but it never emerged on the um, on the upside of that, right? It merged into the line and then it got rejected, right? So this is what we're seeing here with Bitcoin. We have the 14 day, we have a clear, a clear cut cross here, the 72. We got the rally and we're coming up here on the stronger indicator, the 200, which is this red line. And we get a, it, it's, it, it, I'm not going to say we're getting, it got rejected. Um, we're still here relatively close. We could do a retest and emerge and still come up. Um, but the off of the 200, it got projected. So this is one of the things you see where the liquidity kind of came out of the market. So you saw Bitcoin come down, Ethereum come down, Doge come down. You've seen it kind of trickle over um, the uh, the market here. But the great thing is it used the 72 day, which is this orange line here as support. So now it rallied back up and we're positioning to do a retest, right? Now, I know this I know this isn't Dogecoin, but this is very important for the tone of the market and the flow of capital coming into the market, right? So, this is saying that hey, it wasn't it didn't have the strength to break above the 200, but it's not weak enough to fall below the 72. So what we're having here is a tightening, right? So what, what we're having here is a, a tightening of the liquidity coming in here between these two zones. And the question is, where is that liquidity going to come from to pretty much break above this? Now, this retest here, this could be the one. This could be um, the opportunity here for us to kind of merge above it and get that 14 cross in the 72. As long as the 72 is still here, um, that will be obviously the next big indicator, but that will be a couple months out. And um, if I had to give a projection, I think something like that would happen. We'd have um, this consolidation here and um, go on and did a retest. And in a couple months, we'll get that 72 um, to kind of rise up and, and cross the 200. And then that'll kind of put us on track to have that run, um, the historical run around like Q1 of 2025, right? Because this is a 72. This is a little bit more than two months, right? So even right now, if we start at this upward bend, we're talking about December, uh, January ish. If we have this uh, this upward bend here to kind of catch up to it, the two hundred is going to, for, for the most part, remain flat in this area as we go through uh, the days and into November. But the seventy two is going to start the curve. But you'll see, depending on the aggression that we have once we break above the two hundred, that will kind of influence this. But we're talking about an average of seventy two days. So we're we're talking about around roughly around two. Um, two, two and a half months. So, uh, and uh, that will kind of put us in projection here to follow a more historic um, run. So if I had to make a projection, if we're able to break above this, I think we'll be in line for that. But overall, this is not um, a, 
um, like I would consider something to panic about and say, hey, like it's about to crash or it's going back to, um, you know, Bitcoin is going to 40K. I've seen that and Doge back to five cents. I've seen that. Um, we don't have, in my opinion, we don't have evidence of that just yet. Because what we're seeing here is um, it was not like we're in a free fall. We got a tightening here on Bitcoin. So we got the rejection. So I think right now we're positioning ourselves for a retest of this 200. Right. And if we're bouncing between here to 72 to 200, I think that's great. We're just waiting for liquidity to come in to get that push to the upside. So let's take a look here at Doge. Uh, I wanted to clear that up with Bitcoin since it's the market leader. Um, so same thing here. We had the the run here, the consolidation, um, obviously coming off of didn't quite get rejected off of the 200 because Bitcoin was a lot closer to the 200. So obviously, if they're having that sell off, then that's going to play a, um, a big part. The big thing for Doge here is in similar thing with the 14 to 72. You saw that we were able to get the run here. Um, Doge price action is going to explode a little bit more violent. So it'll be more of like a, a little bit of a lagging indicator for Doge um, because the move is going to Doge is a lot cheaper than Bitcoin, basically. So when the liquidity comes into the market, it's going to have a, a, a bigger candle to um, the upside here percentage wise um, if we're looking at the, uh, the indicator here. So sometimes you'll see that, oh, okay, it looks like Bitcoin's indicator aligned up perfectly and this indicator crossed like the day after or something like that. And that could be that could be the case because uh, Dogecoin moves relatively quickly when the, the, the liquidity comes into the market. So don't let that be a, um, a distraction from what's going on. But overall for price action, looking at uh, the same thing here, we're looking for a price action for for doge to accomplish here is around that 200 day right because you'll see here it's been a a focal point here not even just for indicators but for price action right so you'll see back here on june 18th through july 2nd doge was rejecting off of the 200 right you see here we broke above it slightly weren't we weren't able to kind of close out this fib level around the 14 cents level but you'll see the 200 day um, and when we started, when we were consolidating, we were able to bounce off of the 14 and try and do a retest at the 200, obviously got rejected. And then we came down to uh, the bottom of the fifth level around like the 973 mark. And then now this is our first reattempt here to get back up to that 200 day. So the 200 day has been a, a very crucial uh, point in this run um, on, on this, I guess, I guess this part of the run here for us to break above and get that momentum. Um, but we are in between the 72 and the 14. So um, it's kind of doing the flip of the um, what, what we just saw with Bitcoin, but we are consolidating in between there. So this is gonna be a great uh, opportunity here um, to see if we're gonna have that momentum here to break above what the uh, the 14 day and possibly instead of using the 72, using the 14 day as support and then having that, uh, that gap here fill between the 14 and the, uh, the 200, excuse me. So, that's one of the things that we're going to need to to see as far as for breaking above or breakouts. We're going to need to see Doge above that 200 level and kind of hold it. So right now we're looking at around 13 cents mark, and that's going to put us in project in. I would say put us in striking range before we can start talking about some of these numbers here uh, to the upside, like around the 17 cents levels and stuff like that. It can kind of give us an um, an idea before we start talking about some of those levels and giving some of those higher. Uh, projections. We have to kind of deal with the elephant in the room and what's happening now. And that is going to be to the liquidity here and getting above the uh, the 200, to the 200 for Doge and for Bitcoin. I know these coins, typically the, the price action is going to be a little different. Pricing is going to be a little different, but typically the liquidity is going to uh, influence them in very similar ways. So this is why you can see some similarities between the, um, the patterns here. So I'm going to Obviously, take a look here at Coin Market Cap just to make sure. I know some people, for those of you who may not have seen my videos before, I make sure that the flow of liquidity is similar and that we're not seeing anything abnormal. And then I'll let me know um, overall if there's something to be worried about. If you if you're looking at something like a Doge or some of the other coins, because um, when they lose interest, you'll see a divergence um, and as long as there's no divergence, you can't say a particular coin is, um, you know, has lost its luster or going to zero or something like that. If it's following the exact same pattern of the market, because you have to say all of them are doing it. So that just means that there's there's an allocation of capital being moved around 
and they're adjusting percentage wise based off of their portfolios. So they're all are going to project similar chart patterns, right? Which is what we're seeing here on the right hand side. You'll see the similar chart patterns here between Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Tether is obviously pegged, so is USDC. So ignore those. But BNB, Solana, uh, XRP, Doge. If you take a look here at these red patterns here, they are all very similar. So this isn't the end of Dogecoin or the end of um, crypto. Well, this isn't panic selling by retail and they're dumping the coin or that stuff. This is an allocation, a reallocation of capital based off of percentages. So you have money leaving out of crypto and all charting the exact same pattern here. So this is where this is institutional uh, movements here on, on the macro scale. I'm not saying that nobody in retail is selling or panicking because you can obviously read comments and determine that. But I'm saying on the uh, institutional side, that no one's they have abandoned Doge or XRP or Solana or any of these things right here. Obviously, you, they're, they're trying the same pattern here. So what you're just seeing is a reallocation of capital. So overall, Doge right now, 1113, uh, up 0.13 on the day. 2.55 on 24 hours and down 12% for the week. Uh, Solana is down 18% on the week. Excuse me, XRP is down. Bitcoin is down roughly about 5 cents. Uh, 5%, excuse me. Ethereum are down a little bit over 8%. And Doge, even here, with it being down 12%, because, it, because the, the same way that I said that it's a lot more easier because it's a, a, a cheaper coin to explode to the upside when that liquidity comes in. It works the opposite way as well, um, as far as to the downside. But because the flow of capital is affecting the top 10 um, roughly in the same way, you're seeing it still be able to maintain its position. Now, um, when it comes down to panic, uh, panic selling and when to be concerned about the abandonment of those, because I know that's been some of the questions and some of the statements being made, that would happen if you saw a greater percentage being sold off of Doge and Doge starts to lose its position because if the market's selling off, in order for Doge to maintain a position here around, let's say, eight to, let's say eight to 10, which is typically what it's done over the last few years, that means that it's going to have to kind of coincide with the sell off or the liquidity coming out of the market. Now, if the market adjusted and the Doge fell from eight to 19 or something like that, then we have a problem, right? Then that's the time to panic here. That's institutional reallocation. They're done with the coin. They're leaving out. That's a big exit. That's something to talk about. But um, as long as it's coinciding with the market here, that's not a big issue. Another thing would be if the market is running and then Doge is I don't necessarily, not necessarily falling to like 19, but doing a divergence here in a charting pattern, obviously that's a difference. That's a switch of strategy. And the amount of capital that's coming into the coin, that's another reason to start looking at things. It's like sideways and saying, okay, something's different here. Something's happening. But until that happens, um, that's not something I'm worried about. Um, obviously, if that does happen, then I will certainly post about it. Too. I'm going to give you guys a heads up. So overall, that is what I'm looking at here in the charts. That's what I'm looking at here um, for uh, institutional allocation and some of the things that we're expecting coming up. Let me know in the comment section your thoughts. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you have not, and I will see you guys in the next video.